Hello chess fans and welcome to Chess Vibe. And today I'm going to show you the game between Dubov Daniel vs Rasmus Swain. All those who don't know Dubov Daniel, Dubov Daniel is a Russian grandmaster and this game is one of the best game in his chess career yet. And he his his game style is usually very innovative and very creative and he actually plays a very brilliant chess. And Rasmus Swain is also a grandmaster and, and very powerful player. So this game is going to be very interesting. And in the game, let's see, will you be able to spot mate in 13 idea? So without any further ado, let's dive into the game. So Daniel Dubo with the white pieces started with 1c4. And Swain with the black pieces replied with 1e6. And Dubov Daniel played knight to c3, d5, d4, and knight to f6. And now we are in the queen's gambit declined. Here comes knight to f3, bishop to e7, bishop to f4, castle, and now e3. Nothing much but simply developing the pieces. Both sides are simply developing the pieces. Here comes b6 by Swain. The idea is to capture the c4 pawn. And going to play bishop to b7 and then the bishop on b7 would be very active so this is the plan of black so after b6 white played queen to c2 here comes bishop to a6 not playing bishop b7 or not going to capture the pawn but going to play bishop a6 and the idea of playing bishop a6 is now bishop and the pawn is attacking the pawn on c4 and it's a double attack so after bishop to a6 Dub of Daniel simply long castle. Uh, but this is not a good move. According to engine, a better move could be happen. A better move is to play knight to e5. And the idea of knight to e5 is first of all, the knight is placed in a very good square in the center square. And the second idea is here the knight is also protecting the pawn on c4. So after something like d into c4, bishop into c4, bishop into c4 knight into c4 and it's an equal position but after bishop a6 long castle have been played by dub of daniel which made the game interesting as both the sides have been opposite side castle so the result is going to come it's not going to be a draw so after long castle black decided to capture the c4 pawn with the pawn here comes knight to g5 uh, and the idea of playing knight g5 here there are many ideas. First of all, there could be some ideas with f3, e4, grabbing a nice center. And by playing knight g4, it looks like white is going to do a very powerful attack by creating some weaknesses on the h7 pawn. And there could be some ideas with bishop e5, going to eliminate the bishop uh, knight on f6, and going to checkmate the blocking by capturing the, the pawn on h7. So knight g5 is a very nice move by Dub of Daniel. And after knight g5, black played knight to c6, developing the piece. Here comes a3 by the of Daniel, because after knight c6, it's a very serious threat. Knight b4 is a very nice move, could be played by Swain if a3 would have not been played. That's why a3 by the of Daniel. Here comes g6, protecting this h7 thread, which could be very much dangerous in the future. Here comes h4 by Dub of Daniel. The idea is very simple. He wants to play h5, open up the position, open up his rook file, and going to attack on the black king. So h4 is a nice move. And here comes bishop to d6 by Swain. Bishop d6 was not a what is was a fine move, but the best move in this position for black is to play knight to d5. The idea is here the knight is attacking the bishop on f4. The, and the bishop on e7 is also now open to capture the pawn, knight on g5. And uh, more ideas could be the, to capture the knight on c3 perhaps. So uh, if the game would have continued from in this position. After knight d5, white would have captured the pawn on h7. Which looks very dangerous now. Because after king into h7, now comes h5 by white. And here the threat is to simply capture up the pawn on g6 and with check. And the pawn cannot move from the g6 square because the pawn is pinned. So the best move in this position from black is to play rook to h8, h into g6 check, king g7, here the king cannot capture the pawn because the queen is protecting the pawn and it's also a check. So king g7, rook into h8, 
queen into h8 and now comes knight into d5 e into d5 queen to f5 by the of diagonal because now the uh, pawn and the queen is attacking the pawn on f7 so here comes f into g6 and after queen into d5 it's slightly better position for black so this could have been played by Swain, but after h4 Swain decided to go bishop to d6 not going with knight to d5 and this is also a fine move it's an equal position and after bishop d6 the of diagonal played g3 not going to capture the bishop on d6 here comes queen to e7 by Swain. at the place of queen to e7 this was the queen e7 was a blender by Swain. in this position he should have played bishop to b7 and the idea of playing bishop b7 here if the bishop is targeting the rook on h1 so if the game would have continued from in the, from this position so after bishop b7 the move down would have played bishop into c4 capturing up the pawn here comes knight into d4 by swain because here the bishop is open to capture up the rook on h1 and the knight is also attacking the queen on c2 so the obvious move is to capture the knight on d4 here comes bishop into f4 check g into f4 bishop into h1 rook into h1 queen into d4 capturing up the pawn here comes knight to e4 rook to d8 rook to e1 and after knight into e4 knight into e4 it's an equal position although it's like one rook versus two minor pieces but black is having seven pawns and white is having seven, uh, five pawns so it's an equal position but after g3 here swain played queen to e7 which was a terrible blender by swain because in this position now comes a very natural move and a very powerful move h5 the idea, the idea of h5 is very simple he wants to capture the pawn on g6 and his rook file would be open and there are many threats for black in this position white can even play bishop g2 threatening this knight as well as the rook can develop the rook and it would be a serious trouble for black now so after h5 here swain played e5 saying okay putting some pressure on the bishop on f4 and after e5 here dubov played h into g6 capturing up the pawn here have to capture the pawn here if you go for capturing up the bishop on f4 it's still fine but still it's a completely winning position for white because in this position comes a very powerful move for white in this position here both the moves are winning but the most exciting and cool move looks like g7 the idea is to capture the h7 pawn now because now it's a triple attack so the way, the best move in this position for black here is to play knight into d4 i don't know why but a contingent is the best if black would have played h6 then white will simply capture the uh, pawn on h6 and the threat is very clear though white wants to play knight h7 and after knight into h7, queen into h7 is a checkmate. And even the pawn is attacking the rook on f8, so it's completely winning position for white. That's why, after h into g6, queen have to capture the pawn on g6 at the place of bishop. So after h into, h into g6, here Dubov played bishop to g2, saying, okay, you can grab my bishop on f4, I'm going to grab your knight on c6. So e into f6 was played. All those who are thinking why not to protect the knight on c6 by playing queen d queen e8 protecting the knight this is not going to work because here comes bishop into c6 queen into c6 and after d into e5 black is going to lose a beast and it's winning position for white that's after bishop g2 here so we decided to capture the bishop on f4 here comes bishop into c6 captured up the knight and also threatening to capture up the Rook on a8. After bishop into c6, here Swain played f into g3. Here comes king b1 by Dubov Dubo Daniel. Here you cannot capture the pawn on g3 because now come queen into e3 check. And after queen into e3 check, white pawns are very weak and uh, even the knight on g5 is hanging and it's better position for black. That's why after f into g3 he decided to play king b1 and still not going to capture the rook on a8 it's a fine move but not the best king b1 was the best move moving the king to safe square 
now going to attack on the king side. So after king b1, Swain played rook d8 because the rook was attacked on a8. Here comes f4 by Dubov Daniel, which was blundered by him. In this position, he should have captured the pawn on g3. And the idea of capturing up the pawn here because the queen is now open to come on h2 and it's going to be checkmate for black. So if game would have been continued from in this position, black will obviously play king g7 because queen h2 is a very big threat because it's going to be a checkmate on h8. So after king g7, white is going to play e4 now and the plan of playing e4 here white simply wants to push the pawn and there is no actual way to defend in this position for black the best move in this position for black is to play rook h8 and after rook into h8 rook into h8 here comes e5 bishop into e5 d into e5 queen into e5 and in this position white is a piece first and he's going to win the game but f4 was played at the place of catching up the pawn on g3 which equalizes the position and after f4 he has swain played bishop to c8 a very nice move the threat is to play bishop f5 and the queen and the king would be in trouble so here comes rook e1 by dub of daniel and here comes king g7 here bishop f5 is not having much meaning because here white is going to simply push the pawn to e4 that's why here comes king g7 and now the plan is to play rook h8 and going to trade off the powerful rook on h1 so after king g7 white played Knight to d5, a very nice move by Dubov Daniel bringing up one more piece to attack black king. With the knight on d5 is attacking the queen as well as the knight. So here comes knight into d5. Here comes rook to h7 check first. Uh, after king to g8, here comes rook into f7. All those who are thinking why not to capture the knight on d5, it's also hanging. Right? But no, after bishop into d5, here comes bishop to f5 a very powerful move by black here the bishop is attacking the queen as well as the king so white have to push the pawn to e4 and now comes bishop into f4 capturing up the pawn here after bishop into f7 check rook into f7 rook into f7 and now queen is going to capture the knight on g5 here after queen into c4 the idea of capturing up the pawn is now white is threatening to capture the bishop on f5 and with a check the queen has is being lost on g5 so after queen into c4 white black is going to play rook into d4 very nice move by black because after queen into d4 now queen is not protecting the rook on f7 so now comes king into f7 after e into f5 queen into f5 check king a1 and in this position black is having a very nice position although it's uh, black is better but it's a playable position but after king g8 that's after king g8 dubov daniel decided to capture the pawn on f7 with the rook which is the right move and after rook into f7 here comes queen into g6 check here comes king to f8 it looks like dubov daniel has sacrificed the rook but this is what we gain after sacrificing a piece whenever we sacrifice a piece we get development as as well as we get an active play so after king to f8 here comes queen to h6 check by dubov daniel here comes rook to g7 bishop into d5 capturing up the knight and here the threat is very simple of white he wants to play queen h8 check and rook g8 is forced and after queen to g8 it's a checkmate so bishop into d5 was a nice move and in this position here swain played king to e8 which was a uh, blunder in this position he should have played bishop to f5 check because after e4 he actually the pawn cannot capture the bishop because it's a pin so black is simply going to move the king to e8 here after bishop c6 check king bishop d7 queen h5 check king f8 and it's an equal position so this should have been played by swain but after bishop into d5 he played king e8 and it's all already trouble for Swain in this position because here comes queen h5 check king d7 trying to move the remove the king from the this king side and going to try to bring the king on the queen side but it's obviously not so easy so after king to d7 here comes queen h3 check king goes back to e8 queen h5 check 
king d7 repeating the position and here Dubov Daniel is not going to repeat the position and he played bishop to e6 check and after bishop e6 check here Sweden played king to c6 looks a very natural move he wants to put the king on b8 but this is what the blunder was in this position the best move for black in this position is to capture the bishop on e6 because the bishop into queen into e6 knight into e6 king into e6 it looks like black has given up the queen but if you count the material it's like rook versus rook and rook versus two bishop versus the queen and although white is slightly better in this position but it's it's at least playable position for black in this position but after bishop to e6 check he played king c6 and from this position feel free to pause the video and try to find mate in 13 which was played in the game by Dubov Daniel so take your own time even half an eye even one up but please try to find mate in 13 so okay let's see have you able to find mate in 13 idea by Dubov Daniel so after king c6 here comes first check by playing queen f3 check so king is forced to go to b5 here comes king b5 and now comes bishop in the c4 check wow here dubov dan is going saying that okay you want to capture the bishop i'm going to simply play queen c6 check king is king is having two options whether he can go to b6 or uh, b3 or d3 but it doesn't matter because it's queen c2 checkmate so after bishop into c4 check the king cannot capture the bishop so king have to go to a5 and now comes queen to d5 check here comes bishop f5 because if king will move to a4 it's queen b5 checkmate that's why bishop f5 bishop c5 is the fourth move here comes b4 check by dubov daniel here the king is forced to move to a4 and now comes queen to g2 the idea of playing king queen to g2 is very simple he wants to play queen c to check and after black captures the pawn on a3 it's queen b3 checkmate so after queen g2 here comes bishop into b4 by swain here comes queen uh, queen to c6 check here king have to capture up the pawn on a3 he can even play b5 but both both the move results in mate in six here comes king into a3 here comes bishop to b3 by dubov dana oh, wow a legendary move the idea of playing bishop b3 here if queen wants to go to a4 and it's a checkmate and even if you try to capture the bishop on b3 now comes queen c to check and after king a3 it's queen a2 checkmate that's why after bishop b3 in this position black have played bishop to d7 and now queen cannot come to a4 because bishop is guarding the square on a4 so here white simply gave check to c1 here black is forced to capture the bishop on b3 and now comes queen c to check king a3 and now queen a check made by dubov daniel so this was the game between dubov daniel versus queen and the mate in three mate in 13 pattern which was found by dubov daniel is never too easy even for a grandmaster level player so guys if you found the mate in 13 idea you are a genius and if you also like this game then please like to my video if you are new to my channel then please subscribe to my channel i will come up with these new videos for you so please stay tuned thank you for watching and bye bye